Hi, Rick here again from Marin for Models, DJI dealer. In this video I'm going to show you how to fit a budget brushless gimbal to the DJI Phantom. Now all this applies right through from the Phantom 1, Phantom FC40 and right through to the Phantom 2. Now I'm going to kind of be working backwards because I've actually already fitted the gimbal onto this one. So the first thing we need to do is obviously to remove the top of the body shell. So the first thing you need to do obviously is to take your props off. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to remove all the body retaining screws. Now you have the 2mm hex headed ones here and here and then there's another one in here and finally you have the little Phillips one right on the end. Do not remove these, these are actually for your motor and don't need to be removed. Now the first thing you need to do is actually attach the gimbal onto the bottom of the Phantom. As you get it in the box, the metal top plate is not already attached to this bottom plate here. So the first thing you need to do is actually attach that on. Once you've got that attached, this part, the main body of the gimbal, can then be attached via these little rubber bobbins which are also included with the gimbal. You've got to muck about with them but you can soon get them squeezed into the uh, into the holes. The next thing we need to do is um, is to wire it up. Now you have two options to power your gimbal. You can either hardwire it in or use the supplied balance power connection. Now as they come from the factory the gimbals have the opposite connector to this one. The idea being is that when the battery is inserted into the model, like that, the idea being is that you can connect the main power connection and then you can basically run the cable from the gimbal up the front of the Phantom and all you basically do is put a notch in the door there so the cable can run in and then that can still close and then the gimbal plugs into there. Alternatively, what I prefer to do is to um, utilise the Phantom's onboard power supplies. Now, this cable here is already fitted onto the gimbal, it's on, uh, onto the main board, it's under all the silicone and that is normally actually just poking out through your leg. So if you want to, um, what I do is I pull this back through and then I thread the wires, the main power wires, these are actually from the gimbal, through the leg and I hard solder them in. This way when I turn the Phantom on, it'll automatically switch the gimbal on. Okay, now the next job is to actually connect the pitch control wire so you can actually manually control the pitch from the transmitter. Now, you actually only need one cable to operate the pitch and that's the red one here. Now, supplied usually with the gimbal you will get uh, three cables joined together but they all split apart. So basically you really only need to split uh, one off to do this job but I'm going to do it with two and I'll explain the reason why later. Now the red wire goes to, if you look closely at that connection, still in focus, you'll see that the connector is like a, a series of pins. So you've got sort of two columns of three pins. Now the red wire will actually get connect, will be connected to the top left hand pin. Now that wire, as you can see, it just runs, I just have it running through here and then it actually goes up through the holes in the undercarriage leg and then you will see will actually come out here which is just behind the speed control and that is the other side of the leg and then the wires will come up and now the red one you will see will actually plug into if I move that you're going to be plugging into F2 of the flight controller and that is plugged into, if I spin that round, again you've got more pins in there and that will be plugged into the bottom left pin, one furthest from the bottom and the left and that plugs in there and that will control your pitch. Now the reason I've got two cables plugged into mine, what this is for is when you eventually get your gimbal all set up 
and it powers up and that normally would sit completely flat with these um, budget Chinese gimbals sometimes they can actually just sit with a very I'm going to exaggerate but they can sit with a very slight angle off to one side now having that extra cable in there will allow you to adjust this in the NASA assistant which I'll show you later on so it's up to you if you put it in Chances are it'll be fine, it'll sit level without having the second cable, but I just found in this particular installation it was just sitting off by a few mil and it was just noticeable and annoying. Another thing you need to watch out for in a lot of these uh, Chinese gimbals is the, the little board that's on the bottom here. This is like the gyro sensor, the IMU, and this is the text, the text what position the actual camera is actually sitting in. Now I notice with a lot of these, these are normally hot glue gunned on and they're actually normally actually stuck on at an angle and that of course causes this whole plate to actually sit at an angle. So I find in many cases I've actually got to remove these and then what I do is I actually stick them back on with some foam servo tape and I just make sure they sit absolutely level. Another thing to watch out for in these is this cable here on the bottom now you've got basically a four pin cable. Now on these gimbals that we sell, the four pin cable goes into a four pin socket, but quite commonly you have a four pin cable and plug plugging into a five pin uh, socket. And quite easily, these are actually connected off to one side, which is incorrect and basically causes the gimbal not to work. And I've seen so many people post videos up in YouTube saying the gimbal doesn't work, or perhaps they disconnect it to do something, then plug it back in. Now, on these ones that we sell, um, it is, you can't really get it wrong. You, um, you can only plug it in one way, so it'll always work. But as I say, if you're buying an aftermarket one, watch out for that plate. Again, I check to make sure these are all level um, and all go on correctly. Now, if you want to actually control the tilt on the actual gimbal itself, if your transmitter doesn't already have one, the Phantom FC40s don't come with a gimbal tilt lever already fitted. Um, if you have one already fitted, great. If you don't, you, these are available separately. I've also seen many sort of versions of it on eBay. You can pick them up quite cheaply. The genuine DJI one is quite good because it actually comes with a back plate already on it and there's also limiters as well how far you can actually uh, move them. Now to fit this on, if you see my other videos, I have done a video on exactly how to take your transmitter apart and how to fit these on correctly. It is important you fit them on correctly because if you don't have the fittings at the correct angle when you put your transmitter together, the little control pot that that controls to will get squashed down and either won't work properly or you'll damage the pot and it basically won't work at all. Now, the image you see on your screen just now, this is the settings you need to put into the NASA V2 Assistant. Uh, so what you need to do is plug your Phantom into, the, into your computer and boot up the Assistant. Now, if you go to the Advanced tab, then click on the Gimbal tab. First thing you need to do is where it says Gimbal Switch at the top left-hand corner, you need to select that to On. This is how it will now actually control the gimbal. With it off, you will get no control. Other thing you need to do across to the right, it will say output frequency. If you set that to 400 hertz. Now, uh, coming down from that, you'll see servo travel limit. Now, the values that I've got set might seem a little bit odd. Now, I set these like this so that I will get when the lever is in one fully slid to one way the gimbal will be looking straight ahead and when you slide it the other way the gimbal will go to fully looking down because the gimbal will in fact if you want it to um, it will actually look up into the phantom but I don't really see the point of that because you'll just see the underbody and you'll see the legs in your videos so with the center value to send to zero then minimum to 910 that's what gives you the downward look and the uh, maximum set to zero basically stops it looking up. Now, coming down from that, you'll see the roll. Now, this is only required if you have that second wire plugged in to basically just give you slight trimming if your gimbal isn't sitting entirely uh, flat. So it's maybe just canted off to one side very slightly. You see the center value there, I've got set to 40 because it was tilted, I think it was to the left. 
So the more value you put in there, you can just basically fine trim it so the gimbal will sit completely level. So if you haven't got it fitted, just ignore it. And if it sits level, great. But if you find it is sitting off to one side, connect up that second wire and then basically make adjustments to the center value. Now, where it says automatic control gain, um, if you set that where it says pitch F2, set that to zero. And then below that, you'll see manual control speed. Now, this is the actual speed the gimbal works at. I set this value quite low to five, and that way, even if you're quite harsh on the actual tilt control, the gimbal will work actually quite smoothly.